Hey folks, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of St. Margaret of Scotland that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people, Gwe. Today we're going to talk about climate change. In particular, we're going to talk about the Anglican Church of Canada, the Anglican Communion stance on, on stewardship, which, by the way, I believe is shared by many, many, many denominations across North America and across the world. And we're going to talk about one of the chief arguments that I've encountered when it comes to taking a position uh, of, of activism as an environmentalist that, that says the church shouldn't be concerned about climate change. And then we're going to look at a piece of scripture and how it negates that that argument. The Anglican Church of Canada, as well as you know, the Ang other members of the Anglican Communion around the world, we have this thing called the Five Marks of Mission. Now, this, the Five Marks of Mission are, are, are five characteristics that our, our ministries should, should, um, should strive for. Uh, five objectives that our ministries should, should strive to, to achieve. Now, the fifth mark of mission, the one we're going to talk about today, it says to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and to sustain and renew life, the life of the earth. We are to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and to sustain and renew the life of the earth. We are to be good stewards. We are to be good caretakers. We are to put our, our energy into taking care of this world where possible to help the world renew itself, where that's not possible to ensure that we are not taking more from it than what it can provide. This is something that many, many, many churches all around the world, various denominations, they have something like this as part of their mission statement, as part of their raison d'etre. They have something that says we are to be good stewards of the environment. So it's not just an Anglican thing. Many denominations have it. But as I said, because of this channel mainly, I've encountered a particular argument from time to time that says something along the lines of this. The church, Christians, we don't need to worry about the environment. We don't need to worry about the state of creation. We don't need to worry about climate change. The scriptures tell us that the whole world's going to come to a big fiery end anyway. And the scripture tells us that when that time comes, when end times comes, that God is simply going to bring down the new Jerusalem and will renew all life on this earth. Everything will be completely reset. God's going to hit that big red reset button beside God's throne and everything will be instantly fixed back to its perfect natural state back to the state that it existed in the very very beginning it's a wonderful concept it's a wonderful thought I, I'm not going to stand here and tell you it's not going to happen but I but that isn't my particular position on it a couple of weeks ago I did a video where I used the third temptation that Jesus the temptation of power and authority over all the kingdoms of this world. Today, we're going to talk about the second temptation. So Jesus, he's out in the wilderness. He fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. The devil comes along and the devil tempts Jesus. He tempts him to make some bread out of some rocks to take away his hunger pains. Jesus says, no, man shall not live by bread alone. I'm going to jump to the third the devil says, I'll give you authority over every kingdom in this, in this world if you just simply bow down to me. And Jesus says, get away from me. We are not to. We, we worship God and God alone. The second temptation, the devil takes Jesus to this high point in Jerusalem on top of the temple and says, hey, throw yourself down. Throw yourself down. Scripture says God will catch you. Angels will catch you and they will take care of you. Your foot isn't even going to get dashed. You're not even going to, you're not even going to go do so much as to stub your little toe on those blocks down there, way down there at the bottom. And Jesus' response was, it is also said, you shall not test the Lord your God. Now, Jesus in this moment, 
He's not simply relying on his understanding of Scripture because the devil uses Scripture as well. Jesus doesn't get into an argument about Scripture. Well, the Scripture says this. No, the Scripture says that. Uh -uh. Jesus uses his reason. Jesus understands that gravity has a consequence. Jesus understands that gravity, the higher up you are, the faster it is you're going to be when you hit the bottom. That putting gravity to the test, allowing yourself to be at gravity's mercy, is going to lead to really, really horrific consequences. It's going to lead to a really, really horrific outcome. And so Jesus, again, not relying on his ability to argue scripture, simply uses his noodle. No, if I do that, that may hurt. I am not going to put God to the test. I am not going to count on God to, to save me from the consequences of physics, the consequences of gravity. I don't want to land at a super high speed simply because I wanted to see if God would catch me. We know, all of us know, because it's just an innate human wisdom, I believe, that we cannot keep consuming at the rate we are consuming, whatever it is we are consuming. Wisdom, logic tells us that we cannot consume infinitely in a finite system. And the world, creation, nature, is despite how vast it is, despite how massive it is, despite how amazing it is, it is a finite system. If we consume more than it can provide, we will eventually consume that which actually does the providing until we get to the point that the world cannot provide anything. Reason tells us that we can't keep taking from this system and expect the system to keep giving. We, as a population, our, our population is still expanding and so is our desire for more. We want more. We, we want more comfort. We want more safety. We want to be filled more. We want to consume more. Our hunger and thirst is increasing beyond what our needs are and beyond what the planet can provide for. We are putting God to the test. When we allow ourselves to consider this argument and to say, well, you know, God's just going to hit the big reset button, so when the end comes, everything will be taken care of. Again, it's a wonderful thought. But we cannot use that as our fallback position. Between now and the day that that theory is proven to be true or false, we have a responsibility. And if we shirk that responsibility, we are actually, I believe, putting God to the test. We are putting God to the test just like Jesus tells us not to because we are not using our reason. We are not using our intellect, our wisdom. We are not using our logic in this situation. We have a responsibility to be good stewards, to safeguard the integrity of creation, to help this world be sustained and to renew itself. This is what reason tells us to do. This is the path that wisdom tells us to walk. If we rely on the idea of the, of the great reset, we're putting God to the test. And that's not ever a wise choice. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray, I pray that we will take up our responsibility. I pray that we would be willing to let go of our need to consume more and more and more. That we would take what is enough for us, for our families. That we will leave some for others. That we will put our energy behind helping 
to safeguard the integrity of this creation that we have been blessed to be placed within. Amen. Numultus.